Can you detail a bit more what the plan of action is? Um, unfortunately, I can't detail um, further as to what the plan of action is, but to a large extent, it will be focused mainly in Brown. So we will be moving out of campus into Brown. And then, um, are there plans at some stage to go to the JSE still? At this point in time, the JSC is a very contested um, debate among students uh, because of basically students feel as though they are fighting to some degree the fractions that are happening within the ANC. It seems more of an ANC political agenda because even if we do go to the JSC to a large extent, what are we expecting to get there? These are some of the questions that are coming from students. So students will decide if they want to go to the JSC, but the JSC at the moment has been placed on hold. And then just a call about, um, you know, you're obviously going to be engaging security to some extent and yes. police again. Just uh, what do you guys want from this? How do you see this playing out? Um, at this point in time, we're calling for the university to remove private security, especially um, off of our campuses. We've seen with Fort Hare, we've seen with UKZN um, what private security does to students. If it's not physically assaulting students, it's raping students, it's falsely accusing students and getting them suspended. So we want cam um, private security to be removed from campus. Campus. Even yesterday, when you see the damage that is behind me, that came as a result of um, an interaction with private security when they attacked students first. So to a large extent, we're finding that it is private security that is inciting violence um, more than it is students. So we're calling on the university, if they are truly honest um, about not having, about make, maintaining a non-violent protest, they need to be able to work with us as well by removing private security. And do you see the university's shut down, official shutdown as a derailment to your movement? Considering no, not that at there all. might be some students that maybe would just consider, nah, you know what, I don't need to go to this. At this point in time, the whole protest is not specifically about making sure that every single student is present, but it's to make sure that we render the university ungovernable and that no academic or any administrative um, work is done at the university so even if students stay at home that is a victory on our part because it means that they're not coming to class it means lecturers aren't lecturing it means administrative buildings are closed and that is a benefit um, that, that we appreciate and that's something that we will further engage in um, students that are going to come and join us obviously will move forward together as a collective but those that stay at home we appreciate them staying at home and then what's the end point here i mean they've shut it down now until monday i mean what what happens from there what happens from here is that um, we won't allow the university to resume until we have free education. So just a very quick one. I hear the plans to march to Lutuli were shut down. Yes. Um, What's the main reason why not march to the so-called centre of power? I mean, um, there's a students used a phrase that it is only a fool who does the same thing repeatedly, expecting a different result. Uh, we've been to Lituli House before. When we got to Lituli House last year, people will note we were, students were massaged um, by the ANC and the ANC leadership. To a large extent, it is very futile for us to go um, to Lituli House because uh, they have the power themselves to determine and to give us the free education that we want. We don't feel we should go to their doors and beg anymore. Um, in fact, we feel as though if we do go to Lutuli House, we will be playing into the political fractions within the ANC. Um, so we don't want to engage in those things. We want free education. Ours is not a political game. Ours is one based on free education. And then Sharona went on one of the TV stations this morning <coughs> saying that students have been refusing to meet with management, have been attempting to meet with student leaders the whole of last night. What's the decision behind not meeting with management? Um, that is not true. When we came back from Parktown, specifically yesterday, uh, we tried to engage with the Dean of Students, Buleng, and the Dean of Students refused to engage with us. Um, we tried to engage as well with the DVC, um, Tawana Kupe. Tawana Kupe also refused to engage with us as students. So they were only telling the media that they're willing to engage, but they're not. Last week, we um, sent out a list of demands, Fees Must Fall sent out a list of demands to the our Vice Chancellor, who is a UKZN alumni, who is also part of the She for He, um, um, what is this, UN delegation, who is also the chairperson of all vice chancellors around the country, to come in and mediate with the situation that's happening at UKZN, and he refused. And that we took in bad faith to say they don't want to engage with us in any capacity outside of telling us to go back to school and to go back to class. But last night, did they attempt to meet with um, Last night, they did not attempt to meet with us. What they did attempt to do last night was to find out more about the students that were arrested. Um, and to find out what the charges were um, pertaining to the um, court interdict. They also wanted to meet with us to remind us about the court interdict and to intimidate us using the court interdict um, and specifically also wanting to meet with the individuals, the six respondents that are noted there as one of the
respondents myself, um, they wanted to tell us that and warn us that if we were to continue with this protest action, that we would be arrested. And that was the only engagement that they wanted to give us. And we welcomed that. We said, if we must get arrested, then we're willing to do that because we need this free education now. And so if I can just take you, take it out of today and take it back to yesterday. You had you had a moment with one of the deans of the faculties. Uh, can you take us through that incident and just? So initially, I, I think it was misrepresented um, because what had happened earlier on before the media arrived at Parktown was when um, the students at education campus were shutting down, uh, Rob Sharman, um, the dean, was instructing police and showing police um, where to fire at students and where students were hiding when they were running away from the tear gas and the rubber bullets. So it was very disingenuous. It was very appalling from my point of view for him to one, put students in the line of fire and then the next moment want to say that no, the, the university supports you know the protest, the non-violent protest. It was a contradiction that must be noted that we cannot ignore and students needed to know at the same time that um, the management, especially the dean, Rob Sharman, is planning to demolish one of the residences in Parktown to create a parking lot for business school, which is a very contested issue here on campus because it means that we're going to have an accommodation crisis um, next year, the same one we had again this year. So we had to be able to iron out those issues because if he's willing to speak to the media then probably he can explain to students why he's going to revoke their accommodation and why he's assisting management in suppressing our views.